Hello and welcome back to the Back to Space News Flash. We are officially into the month of February. February? February? The month of love. Let's get started with this week. Let's start out by chatting about Cygnus. The Cygnus NG-12 is the 14th flight of the Northrop Grumman robotic resupply spacecraft. The NG-12 Cygnus delivered 8,200 pounds of science and research investigation supplies and hardware to the ISS on November 2nd. And on January 31st, about three months after it first arrived at the fun spinning lab in space, it's going away on a cargo vessel named the SS Allen Bean after the Apollo 12 astronaut. So basically it began its journey back to Earth after the ground controllers in Houston used the station's Canada Arm to robotic arm to release it into orbit. So this cute little thing will spend about a month in orbit deploying various scientific payloads and then it will meet its demise in Earth's atmosphere in a fiery death. <gasps> The next Cygnus mission, NG-13, is scheduled to launch next week on February 9th, 2020. Don't you think they're moving on a little too quick? So, this is super cool. People are living on Mars! Well, not totally, but they are getting ready. A new crew has arrived at the Mars Desert Research Station, the MDRS, in Utah for a rare dual habitat simulation to see how different teams tackle emergencies together on the big red planet. I don't know how I haven't heard about this place, but the MDRS is the world's largest and longest running Mars analog program, which is used to simulate Mars missions for training and testing and educational outreach. This new 12 member crew named Crew 220 from Mars Academy USA arrived last week. So here's how it's gonna work, guys. Some members of the Crew 220 will stay at the MDRS facility and others will stay at the MAU habitat. The crews will switch from one habitat to the other halfway through the mission so that they both can experience each habitat and simulate how astronauts will communicate from different locations during the actual real mission. So the MAU is set up pretty close to the MDRS habitat. It has a series of interlocking geometric tents that house both crew quarters and research areas. They're gonna be doing some medical and communication testing procedures. I will keep you guys in the loop about that because that is pretty dang cool. NASA has spoken. In a world with commercial space thriving, NASA is waving the green flag. So let's take it back a quick second. At the 23rd Annual Commercial Space Transportation Conference in Washington this past week, NASA made it clear they are definitely pushing for commercial spaceflight. And last week they announced 16 scientific experiments and technology demonstrations that will hitch a ride to the moon aboard lander built by two private companies, Astrobiotics of Pittsburgh and Intuitive Machines of Houston. These two landers are slated to launch in July of 2021 on the United Launch Alliance Vulcan Centaur rocket and SpaceX Falcons 9. So Astrobiotics Peregrine lander will carry instruments to study several aspects of the moon's environment. This will work to help prepare for the arrival of astronauts and establish a sustainable human presence on the Moon. Intuitive machines will fly experiments that will test autonomous orbital. Had to Google that definition. Moving on in surface navigation as well as communication experiments and a camera that will monitor the spacecraft's landing plume. The landing plume is critical to planning for Mars missions. And you can actually go read on space.com about all of the experiments, all 16. Jim Bridenstine has said this in November, 2018, and man has it come true. And he said, quote, the innovation of America's aerospace companies wedded with our big goals in science and human exploration are going to help us achieve amazing things on the moon and feed forward to Mars. I'm so sad I forgot to report this a while ago, but remember the Japanese billionaire that booked the first flight on SpaceX? Well, originally in 2018, he said he would fly himself and six to eight other artists around the moon. If you haven't already heard this, he recently started a competition by the way of his Twitter. It said, wanted. Why not be the first woman to travel to the moon? Hashtag MZ underscore looking underscore for underscore love. Alongside an image of him with the moon, with the caption, come to the moon with me? 
Question mark? The contest accepted applicants from the public, specifically from women aged 20 and older, who have a, quote, bright personality and are always positive, to become the girlfriend of the 44-year-old father of two and accompany him to the moon. Wow. So in case you didn't already figure this one out, there was a huge backlash for it. I guess the main issue was that he was saying this was going to be the first woman to go to the moon. And there are already a ton of women training to be the first woman with NASA and the Artemis program. I guess I do understand that, but also there are millions of people who watch The Bachelor, which is essentially the same concept, but just not in space. But anywho, he apologized on January 29th. He announced on Twitter again that the matchmaking documentary and contests were no longer happening. And he said, I am truly sorry from the bottom of my heart, he wrote. So the angry people won and he's not doing it anymore. What are your guys' thoughts? Tell me, talk to me. A Houston-based company named Axiom Space has been picked by NASA to build at least one habitable private module that will be attached to the International Space Station. NASA hopes that the Axiom module will help spur the growth of an off-Earth economy, one that eventually extends past the ISS. Quote, Axiom's work to develop a commercial destination in space is a critical step for NASA to meet its long-term needs for astronaut training, scientific research, and technology demonstrations in low Earth orbit. So I actually met with a member of Axiom Group a couple of months ago, and they are super amazing, and I have nothing but great things to say about their company and, and their vision, and I can't wait to see what happens in the future. This is also super cool, guys. There was a new photo taken of the sun, and it was the highest resolution image of the sun in history. The image came out of the Daniel K. Inouye, I'm probably saying that wrong. Solar telescope, the DKIST, on the Hawaiian island of Maui. Scientists want to use this telescope to learn about the sun's magnetic field and to figure out why the sun's corona, yes, I said that word, it's a little sensitive right now, but in this case, it means the outer layer is hotter than its visible surface. Okay guys, and back by popular demand, and by that I mean, I read your guys' comments, I see it, you don't like the shorter version and you miss the past. So, without further ado, let's bring back the past. So, 49 years ago was the launch of the Apollo 14 mission. And why is that so personal to me? Well, my grandfather was on that mission and he also had red hair. Stuart Rusa, command module pilot, Ed Mitchell and Alan Shepard went to the moon. This was the eighth mission to the moon and the first to land in the lunar highlands. My grandfather actually took what is now referenced as moon trees to the moon. Um, the reason for this is he was a smoke jumper in his lifetime and he wanted to take the seeds of five different species to the moon. They also did a fun thing once they landed, which you might've seen, they went golfing. I wish my grandfather was here to tell me more about it, but luckily my dad fills me in on most of it. If you guys have any questions, be sure to ask me in the, um, the comment section and I can reply with any questions about the Apollo 14 mission. And this has been a new section that we've just now included and it's just for you guys. We have our space dog reporting live as a correspondent. Maya, tell me how you're doing over there. Uh-huh. She said it best. And now for the giveaway of last week. It is a t-shirt. It was the nice short sleeve t-shirt from Back to Space. And it is Tina Hickerson. You won! So go ahead and send us an email at info at backtospace.com. This week we're giving away a long sleeve shirt. Has a lot, this one has dog hair on it. The one that you will get will be brand new with no dog hair, I promise. Anyways, if you want this, which I know that you do, you want to do three things. One, leave a comment. Apollo 14, space dogs, there's so many options. Two, like this video. Can't really see who's liking it, but look, make sure you like it. And three, you subscribe to this channel. Oh my God, there's so much dog hair. Also, I just became a member of the Stardom team. Stardom is a multimedia platform that seeks to show everyone from all corners of our pale blue dot to find their place in our inevitable future among the stars. Stardom is where the cosmos takes the spotlight. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram, so check them out. Thanks everyone so much for watching. That's it for this week's Back to Space News Flash. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I appreciate it. So does Space Dog Maya. 
Make sure you leave those comments. Talk to me about Apollo 14. Tell me about what you want me to ask, Maya. And more importantly, what do you think of the future of space exploration? Kind of a loaded question, but I just want to get a conversation starting. All right, guys. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week. Ciao.